Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade, module 17, lesson seven. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can find a quotient by writing a zero in the dividend. The learning objective is to write a zero in the dividend to find a quotient. The prior learning is that students explained division by using equations, rectangular arrays, and area models, and students divided using strategies based on place value, the properties of operations, and the relationship between multiplication and division. All right, so moving into the lesson, we're on page 447. We have a step it out, number one. This is Charlie weighs four cantaloupe melons. They each weigh the same amount, so how much does each cantaloupe weigh? So if you look over at the picture, the weight shows us that it's 176.6, and there are one, two, three, four melons total. So for A, we want to write a division expression to model the situation. So we want to take our total weight of 176.6, and we want to divide it by the four melons. Okay, we want to estimate the answer to see at the end if we end up getting a answer that makes sense. So I know that if I have 176.6 divided by four, I want a number that's roughly divisible by four. Okay, so I know that my 176 is pretty close to 160, or the other option would be 200. I'm going to go ahead and go the 160 option just so I know that my answer is going to be a little bit less than what the actual answer will be. So if I made this 160 divided by 4, I know that 16 divided by 4 is 4 and then my extra 0 at the end. So I know that my answer will be a little bit more than 40. All right, so for C, now we're actually going to divide out our problem over to the right, and it gives us all the steps that we're going to be doing. So first it says write the decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point in the dividend. So all that means is lift the decimal up. So here it is between the sixes. All I'm going to do is write it in that box to start with, just so I don't forget about it at the end. That second bullet point says go ahead and divide the tens, the ones, and the tens. So we're going to go ahead and divide it through. So we have our 176.6 divided by 4. Now, can 4 go into 1? No, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 0 there. But 4 can go into 17, and it can go in 4 times. And my 4 times 4 is going to go ahead and be 16. When I subtract, it's just going to be 1, and then I'm going to bring that 6 down to be next to it. Now, I have four goes into 16. Just repeat it again. So four goes into four, I'm sorry, four goes into 16 four times. And then that four times four is 16 again. And now I have zero. I have to go ahead and bring down that second six. Now I say, how many times can four go into six? Four can go into six one time. And one times four is four. Now I have six minus four is two. That's the end of our original problem, right? Is our answer would be leaving off at two. But with decimals, what we're allowed to do is what's written in blue is we can keep the division going by adding on zeros because it's not changing the value of the dividend. It's just allowing us to find how small this decimal actually is. So what the problem did for us here in blue is it added a zero right here. And so now what we're allowed to do is we're allowed to keep going until the problem ends. So now we can bring down that zero next to our two to make it 20. So now four goes into 20. We know that goes in five times equally so that five times four is 20 and now we're ending on a zero. So instead of 4.4, I'm sorry, instead of 44.1, which technically is correct, the most accurate answer is 44.15 because we know that it's exactly right, it's the exact amount because our division problem ended in a zero instead of in that remainder two. All right, so 
For D, it says, how much does each cantaloupe weigh? Well, we just found out that it weighs 44.15, and our units here is ounces. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page now. We're going to do number two, so pretty much the same work, just a different problem. So number two says, Kelly wants to buy 78 ounces of almonds. Each bag can hold 31.2 ounces. So how many bags of almonds does Kelly buy? All right, please don't be confused by this. The 78 is the larger number, even though it doesn't have as many digits. The 31.2 is still the smaller number, even though it has three digits in the number. All right, so you want to be writing a division problem. Make sure that larger number goes first. Then for B, can you rewrite the division problem so the divisor, the number you're dividing by, is a whole number? Remember how in the last couple of lessons we were multiplying it? Make sure that you multiply both the dividend and the divisor equally by a number so that you end with your divisor being a whole number. All right, and then for C, go ahead and write in your problem and divide until you find out the final answer. Remember, you are going to be having to put a zero at the end of your dividend because that's what we're practicing for this lesson until you end your problem with a zero. And then D, go ahead and find out your final answer. All right, go ahead and try your best on these couple problems and then come back and we will solve them together. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, great. Let's go ahead and solve these together. So for A, if I'm writing my division problem, I'm starting out with my 78 and I'm dividing it by the 31.2. Now I want to rewrite my division so that the divisor is a whole number. I want that 31.2 to be a whole number, which means I need to take my 31.2 and I need to move the decimal once this way so that it reads 312. All right, so what I do to one number, I have to do to the other number, which means that I need to take my 78, remember there's always a decimal at the end, and I still need to make that same hop. So now it's gonna be 780. So my new division problem is gonna be 780 divided by 312. And I did this by multiplying both by 10. All right, now for C, it says use the long division table, write the numbers in the long division. So I am going to be dividing 780, and I'm going to be dividing it by 312. All right, I know that dividing by 312 seems like a lot, but really we're just going to be estimating and we will figure this out because it's just a, about 300 into 700, which we'll be able to figure out. All right, so it just says divide the ones, so that's all we're doing. So 312, does it go into seven? No, does it go into 78? No, but it does go into 780, right? So I have about 300-ish into 800-ish, all right? So I know that I can do 300-ish twice to get to 600, but I can't do it three times because that would be 900, which is just too big. So my best guess for what the quotient, the first number in the quotient is gonna be, is gonna be a two. So I'm going to say 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2, and then 2 times 3 is 6. And then I'm going to subtract, and I'm going to get 156 when I subtract all the way through and I end up borrowing. All right. Now, I know that 156 works because it's less than the 312, but I can't leave that as my remainder, right? So what I need to do is after my zero, I'm going to do another decimal zero because that doesn't change. It still says 780, but I do need to keep the problem going until I find out my answer. So now I'm going to bring down that zero. So now I'm doing 1,560. All right, I want to show you a little trick Ignore the last two digits on both. So cover up your 12 and cover up your 60 in the 1,560. You're just looking at 3 into 15. We can do that. How many times does 3 go into 15? 5, right? So I always do that. I always cover up the numbers until I find out what I'm actually dividing by. I know that 300 
goes into 1,560 because 3 goes into 15 five times. Now we get to multiply out. So 5 times 2 is 10. Carry that 1. So 5 times 1 plus 1 is 6. And then 5 times 3 is 15. And look at that. It goes in perfectly. So when I subtract, I'm going to end with that 0, which is what I want. Before we're done, we have to realize that our answer is not 25. What we need to do is we need to write the decimal point up. So we're going to take it from here straight up between the 2 and the 5. So our answer is actually going to be 2.5. So how many bags of almonds does Kelly buy? Kelly buys 2.5 bags. All right, great job. Go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems in this lesson, and I'll see you back for module 18.